Hello everyone, the ones here. Normally people would create stylized grass using the particle system. Today we're ditching that and we're diving into the wonderful world of geometry nodes to create some grass. Geometry nodes are super powerful and way more versatile than particle system. Now, as you can see from the title, this is the first part, which should give you the foundation of geometry nodes before we dive into the second part, which will be creating this. Now, as a special bonus, I'm giving away one of the items in my gumball for free to the first 5 people who successfully made a grass animation using the technique in this video. Speaking of awesome things, I also have a Patreon now. You guys don't have to support me over there, you know, just have fun with Blender. But if you do, I would be eternally grateful. And you will get these exclusive rewards like scene files and assets. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get started. First thing first, make sure that you are using Blender 4.1 or higher. There are some killer features in there which will make our lives a whole lot easier. Now we know what to do, let's delete this cube. Deleting it increases your success by 90%. Well, maybe not, but it certainly can't hurt. Now let's create a plane. Just hit Shift A, then press Tab to go into edit mode. Scale it up to a nice size, then we go back to object mode. We also want a cube in there for good measures, because uh, why not? This will be the foundation of our grassy paradise. Now with our plane selected, let's unleash the power of one of the most underrated features of Blender, hair. Hit Shift A, go to curve section, and click empty hair. Open Geometry Nodes tab and you will see that one node appear automatically. The deform curves on surface node. This little guy ensures that the hair sticks to the geometry even after we deform the mesh. But right now, our plane is pretty much bald, so we're gonna add another node called Generated Hair Curves. This nifty node group came from the team behind Blender because they want to make hair curves easier to use. Plug the curve into the output and grab that eyedropper to select our plane. And you can crank up the density using this parameter. Now, currently our grass doesn't show any thickness, so first go into the render properties and set the curve shape to strip. Then, grab a set curve radius node and put it here, then adjust this value while pressing shift for finer controls. And now we've got some basic grass growing on our plane. Now one important thing to remember, the grass and the plane are separate objects. The grass is automatically parented to the plane, meaning that you can move the plane around and your grass will follow along. We've got the grass set up, but it looks pretty much bland. But don't worry, the real magic is about to begin. For those who are new to geometry nodes, it's basically a non-destructive way to manipulate your mesh. Think of it like giving your model superpowers with the power of nodes. Unfortunately, most of it is just math. Don't worry if math isn't your best friend. Well, I'm also not good at math too, which made me highly qualified to teach math with some memes and visual elements. Now with some special nodes, we can tell Blender to manipulate these points individually. In this case, we want to control how each blade of grass sways in the breeze. And to achieve this, we need to control the rotation of each point based on the one before it, essentially using the previous point as a pivot. We'll use a node called Offset Point in Curve, which can give us the reference of a point along the grass. This lets us reference the previous point, acting as the center of rotation. Now if there isn't a previous point, then we need to default it to the current point using the switch node set to integer and add an index node. Now we'll use an evaluate and index node set to vector and grab the position node and plug it like this to get the position of the previous point. And then add a vector math node set to subtract and plug the current position and the previous point position like this. Now we have the arrow that we can use to do the rotation, but before that we have to accumulate the field using the accumulate field node. And also be sure to set it to vector too. Imagine it's like stacking those arrows belonging to each control point on top of each other. Now with a set position node, put it over here and plug the leading output into the position input. And then we can see that our grass stacks up like this. It's because at the accumulate field node, we initially gave every blade of grass the same ID. To fix this, we'll use the index node and the evaluate on domain node, set to spline, and plug them like this to give each grass blade a unique ID. Now everything is at the center, so we can add the curve root node, plug the root position to the offset of the set position node, and now our grass is back to its original position. Then finally, we can add the vector rotate node here, set this to outer, and now we can rotate the grass in any direction we want. Ooh, that's the initial setup, and next we will create a virtual wind. But before that, here's a few words of advice. It might seem complex now, but trust me, 
the more you play with geometry nodes, the more it will become second nature. And you look back and say, wow, how did I ever struggle with this? Just keep practicing and soon you will be a grass professional. Now let's get this grass rain in the breeze. We can use a node called a line outlet director to control the rotation of each grass blade. Think of it like pointing a finger in a direction. Blender will automatically calculate the rotation for that direction. Set the align mode to C-axis and for the input vector, we will use 1, 0, 0. This makes all the blades face the x-axis, but hey, real grass isn't that uniform, right? The tip should bend more than the roots, and here's where things get cool. We'll grab a mix node, set it to rotation, then we'll plug this into the B socket. We'll grab the spine parameter nodes, which generates this nice gradient. On the root, we want no rotation, and on the tip, we want the full effect of the rotation. Plug this to the mix node, and now you can see the sweet bend. But our grass is pretty stiff, so let's add randomness to it using the ever popular noise texture node. Turn off normalize, scale it down to 0.5, and set the detail to 0. This creates a subtle, natural level of randomness. Then we we'll use two math nodes. Set one to multiply and another to multiply add, then connect them like this. Now for the grand finale, let's animate the grass. To do this, we'll animate the vector used by the noise texture node. We'll use a combination of nodes like curves root, vector math, scene time, and combine XYZ node to create a setup that increases the X value over time. And now you can hit play. Your grass is now swaying gently in the breeze. It might seem a little bit slow, so let's crank it up using a multiply node set to negative 5, then plug it over here. And now we got some nice looking wind. But wait, there's more! We can add even more randomness to the rotation using the rotate rotation and an outlet to the rotation node. This lets us use the color generated by the noise texture to add some extra wobble to each grass blade. Plug them like this, And now, that's some seriously dynamic grass. And to add more controls, we can duplicate this mix node which we used earlier and place it over here. This lets us adjust the strength of our noise texture, giving the ultimate control over the amount of randomness in your grass. So, how is that? You've gone from a bald plane to a mini ecosystem with the power of geometry nodes. Alright, we are now almost at the end. Let's make the grass look a little less plastic and make it more like grass. We've come a long way, but shading is key. Don't worry, because it's almost too easy. First thing first, let's jump into the shader editor and create a brand new shader for our grass. We'll head back to geometry nodes and assign this new shader over here. Back in the shader editor, we'll make a simple toon shader. Grab a diffuse BSDF, Shader to RGB, a mix node, a color ramp, and a noise texture. Now set the scale to 0.3, and I will use this normal node to replace the grass original normals. Check the video description for the color codes. And in the material properties, set the shadow mode to none. This means that our grass won't cast any shadow, but it can still receive them from other objects, creating a more stylized view. Now select the light and change it to sunlight, and reduce the strength to 10. Next, let's head into the world shader and set the environment to black to remove all the effects it's had on our grass shadow. Alternatively, you can use this background shader setup if you want to set the background color without affecting other shaders. Finally, in the render properties, under color management, set the view transform to standard to ensure our colors display correctly. And that's pretty much it. Now this next part is optional, but if you want to make the grass a little bit more stunning, here's an optional bonus step. We we'll use the geometry node to store some data about our grass, then we can use that in the shader. We'll grab a store name attribute node, and use it to store the output of the multiply add node located after the noise texture. This data will represent the wind affecting our blade. Then we'll add another attribute to store a random value of each grass blade. Set this to spline, and add the random value node. Make sure that both of these is set to vector, and set the minimum values to negative 1. Then plug this at the end of the geometry node. Back in the shader, we'll use the attribute node to get the wind data, 
Then we'll use the map range node to modify the data a little bit. Then we'll mix that with the original color of our grass. And now, our grass has a pleasing wind effect. We'll do the same with the random attribute, add a hue saturation value node and a separate XYZ node here. Reduce the factor and plug them together like this. And now we have some variation making each blade ever so slightly different. And there you have it! You have created some awesome looking grass in Blender that reacts to light sources making it look super realistic and stylized at the same time. Well, congratulations! If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And before you go, check that subscribe button, it might just turn into a rainbow if you haven't subscribed yet. Stay tuned for the next part, big thanks to all my amazing Patreon supporters. Now, it's your turn to go further and beyond and create some incredible grass scenes. Stay positive and happily blending.